Not long after the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office's Patent Trial and Appeals Board, or PTAB, was established, Jones Day rolled out its PTAB blog. The blog just posted its 500th entry. That's impressive, but how did that happen? Jones Day's Dave Cochran and Matt Johnson are here to tell us. And you'll also hear how PTAB is handling the COVID-19 situation. You might be surprised. I'm Dave Dalton. You're listening to Jones Day Talks. Dave Cochran is one of Jones Day's leading patent trial and appeal board, or PTAB, litigators. In 25 years of practice, he has handled every type of patent matter for clients, primarily in high technology fields. Dave was part of the three-lawyer Jones Day team that prevailed at the Supreme Court and SAS Institute, Inc., V. Iancu, fundamentally changing PTAB litigation practice. Matt Johnson is one of the firm's primary contacts on the practice before the PTAB. He represents both petitioners and patent owners at the board. And Matt is the administrator of Jones Day's PTAB litigation blog. You can find that at PTAB litigation blog, that's one word, ptablitigationblog.com. Dave, Matt, thanks for being here today. Hey, Dave. Good to talk to you. You know, 500 blog posts, 500. I don't think I've done 500 of anything in my entire life. You hit 500 home runs in the majors. You go to Cooperstown, and they put a statue of you up in your hometown. So sincere congratulations. I mean, a lot of people start these things, but the follow-through and so forth is just just astounding what you guys have done. 500 posts in around four years. So great accomplishment. But let's back up for a second. Uh, let's start with Matt. Matt, in case someone listening isn't familiar, can you talk a little bit about what the PTAB blog is, what it covers, who the reader targets are, where we can find it, that kind of thing? Sure thing. Jones Day's PTAB blog, Patent Trial and Appeal Board blog, is aptly named a blog that covers the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office's Patent Trial and Appeal Board. That is where litigants can go to challenge the validity of a patent, typically one that's been asserted against them, and it provides a, a less expensive mechanism for, for challenging and, and litigating the validity of patents. The PTAB, the Patent Trial and Appeal Board at the PTO, has been around since September 2012, and uh, we've been covering it at Jones Day's PTAB blog over the last four years. The blog can be found at PTAB litigation blog. Dot com, and it's really targeted toward anyone involved in, in technology or uh, that might be involved in technology litigation. Patent litigation at the PTAB, at the Patent Trial and Appeal Board, is really a component of any patent litigation today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that someone who's been accused of infringement is going to think of right away uh, as being an option to try to extricate themselves from the litigation that they've become involved with. Okay. So it comes out, what, roughly twice a week you shoot for? Two or three times two, a, three a week, I think. Two years ago, we had 150 articles. Last year, we were wow. just north of 130. So there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on, a lot to write about at the PTAP. Walk me through the process. Is there an editorial calendar or do lawyers on the team come up with their topics or how does content and information find its way to the blog? I think we'll talk about this through the session today. Really, the key to this is, is having a, a great team to sure. to help work on these blog posts. We have a team here at Jones Day of, of over 30 attorneys who are involved at the PTAB, excited, interested in the PTAB, and regularly authoring articles at the blog. We have kind of a loose calendar of assignments, three folks each week who are kind of up for writing an article that week. And each of the authors, as I said, is very interested in the PTAB as a forum and is keeping an eye out on interesting cases, the interesting decisions. And oftentimes they say, hey, I want to write about this topic this week. And I say, go for it. I'll make sure no one else grabs that topic so we don't have anyone doing double duty on a single case. But not if people need suggestions. The rest of us are keeping an eye on things and are, are flagging interesting decisions as they come out. And as I said, between 1,200 and 1,500 cases being filed at the PTAB each sure. year, so there are tons of decisions coming out. There's always lots of interesting uh, things going on, and, and, and we try to flag a few of those a week to write about. Right. No, no shortage of content, certainly, or, or of fodder. Let's go over to Dave Cochran for a second. Dave, a lot of blogs fail. In fact, Laura Bell, who's also the content manager here at Jones, stay with me. We get approached occasionally by a group that says, we want to start a blog. And we don't discourage them, certainly, but we want them to know what they're in for. And I always say, hey, you can get by for a while on enthusiasm and adrenaline and, oh, this is something brand new. 
But you know, it's it's tougher than it sounds. Bottom line is a lot of blogs fail. Why has this one endured and become so successful, do you think? Well, I think it's because, you know, if a if the blog gets stale, then it's going to fail. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's the, that's the first rule of of blogging. You have to if you're going to have a successful blog, you can't let it become stale. You have to have continuous, fresh, updated content. That is in in my mind the number one, you know, the number one rule of, of successful blogging, whether it's legal blogging, sure. you know, or entertainment blogging or anything else. Nobody's going to come look at your stuff if you have the same stuff that you had two weeks ago. So that's the number one rule of blogging in my mind. And you know, I think for when we when we started down the path of, of this particular blog five years ago, six years ago, mm -hmm. we re we recognized because this was an entirely new area of law, the PTAB had started issuing decisions in around 2013. And because of the volume of decisions that were coming out, that we had an opportunity because of the amount of content that we were pretty sure we could produce, that we had an opportunity to meet that primary rule, that we could continuously keep our blog fresh and have new content. And that's really why it's been successful. And it's continued unabated, really, for the last five years as the PTAB has continued to make new law, mm -hmm. uh, refining certain points and coming up with new decisions, it's provided just a fertile ground for us to be able to come up with ideas for articles. Sure. And because, you know, as Matt, as Matt was saying, the other key to our success is we've had a commitment on the part of 30 plus Jones Day lawyers in mm -hmm. the IP practice to write articles on a routine basis per our schedule. And so we have this continuous slew of content. So that's the second thing. And the third thing is Matt has done an awesome job at curating the content, keeping us on track, keeping people on schedule, and making sure that we were publishing new articles at least two or three times a week. Right. And so those are, those are really the three keys to our success. But the first one is foremost, which is you've got to have fresh content all the time, all and, the we've time. Been able to, and we've been able to do that with the PTAB litigation blog. You explain that very well, and please take no offense, you almost make it sound easy. Dave, what's the hardest thing about this? You're looking at 130, 150 posts a year. What's the toughest thing about keeping it fresh like you're talking about and generating new content? Yeah, I think, I think the hardest thing for us now, which is it's hard, but it's actually a good thing, is because we have generated so much content, as we know, over 500 articles in almost every area of PTAP practice and procedure. We, you know, we're starting to get to the point where, even though they're continuing to come out with new decisions every every day and every week, mm -hmm. the, the hard part for us has been finding the topics that are really important. And that requires, there's, there's a smaller number of, of people who are associated with the blog who sort of have a more, a more global knowledge of all of the articles that we've produced, right. such that when we see a particular decision, we can say, hey, wait a minute, this is, this is a little bit, you know, maybe this is a nuance of something we've written on before. Ah. We can link back to one of our prior articles. But it's finding the articles, because there's enough decisions, you can publish a, an article every single day. Okay. But the point we are now, the hard part, if there really is one, is finding articles that, you know, on topics that are really making a difference in PTAP practice. Uh, and that, that can be a little bit difficult, but, but again, because there's so many decisions, um, we, we've been able to manage that uh, pretty well, I think. Well, you know, it's great that you say that. In fact, I think that might be part of the success, the fact that it would be so easy for you guys to coast and say, oh, let's just slap this up there because there's another decision. The fact that you're sifting and sorting and filtering through this and saying, okay, here's something new. Here's something different. Here's something better. Here's what we ought to be writing about. That, that shows attention to detail that probably is one of the reasons you've done 500 posts and people are still showing up to read. I, I'm sorry, Matt, I think I jumped in. You were about to say something. I was going to echo, echo that point that you just made, Dave, that there's, blogs not only have a fatigue issue on the writing side, but there's also potential fatigue for the readers. Uh, and there are hundreds and thousands of decisions coming out of the PTAB every year. And if you write about every run-of-the-mill obvious, obvious 
obviousness finding or non-obviousness finding of claims, people are going to become disinterested. They're not going to feel like they're uh, getting something out of the, you know, five minutes they spend every couple of days reading your publication. So uh, I think it's important to, to try to have a, a teaching point in, in each article saying why this is important, what you should take away to your practice, to your company, why why was it important for me to, to read this content. And, and I think that's really the key. It's a challenge, but I think it makes the exercise worthwhile to the, to the readership and it makes the efforts worthwhile to those of us who are working on the blog doing the drafting because this is our practice area this is our our world and so we want to be studying in depth the cases that are informing our practice teaching us new strategy points new procedural points so when one of these issues comes up in in one of the PTAB matters that we're working on we're all over it. We know what the issues are, what the arguments to make are without having mm-hmm. to do a lot of research. We don't have to spend a bunch of client hours researching these issues because we've seen them before as they've come up for other people as we've drafted the blog posts. So I think you know, it's, it's improved our ability to, to be a good ab- advocates, strategists, mm-hmm. and it, it made us more efficient practitioners at the PTAB as well. Just one, one point there, Dave, which, which yeah. Matt alluded to, which I think is really critical. Early on, it's not like we're the only people who've, you know, who, are, who are blogging about the patent trail and appeal board. I mean, I think we have the best blog, but and I think here's the reason why. Early on, some of our competitors were writing about the PTAB decisions, but all they were really doing was summarizing what the decision was. They didn't right. really have any analysis. And early on, we decided, as part of our blog strategy, that we were going to find cases that really made a difference and not only report on the case, but also provide some analysis and some tips and pointers. And if you look at any of our 500 blog postings, Mm -hmm. uh, almost every single one of them ends with practice pointers. You know, so it's not just reporting on cases, but it's explaining to our clients why is the case important and what are the practice pointers, whether you're the petitioner or the patent owner. And I think that's also what's made our blog successful is that it's not just reporting on cases because anybody can do that. Well, sure. Or anybody, there's, there's probably a PTAB site somewhere where the decisions are recorded and, and laid out for anybody to go in there and read. I think that's where your value added is, right? In terms of your analysis, your yes. tips, your pointers, and so forth. It, yeah. As a matter of fact, Matt, you tell a great story. You and Dave were in Cleveland last summer, and we were doing some video, something. You told me there's some evidence, anecdotally at least, that there are people in Washington, maybe even at the PTAB, that are big fans of the blog. This is true, right, in terms of you guys have become kind of a go-to source for information in both sides of this, I think. Yeah, it is kind of fun. We uh, were able to to dig into the the log files and see who's who's been reading our articles, and we and we do get a fair amount of readership from the patent office, likely from judges at the at the patent trial and appeal board, and you know that's been part of the fun in practicing in this area. As, as Dave said earlier, that this forum's only been around for going on eight years now. And there was no body of law. There was no PTAB law in September right. 2012 when this thing got kicked off. And so by advocating in this forum, we've gotten to help formulate, uh, help uh, structure, you know, what, what the proper procedures are, how, how this forum should work. And, and I think the PTAB blog is just another piece of that where, you know, we can analyze the cases that are coming out, help inform other judges who you know, naturally can't read every decision that's sure. coming out of their body. We can help uh, highlight the important cases for them, help them be more informed, and, and help maybe direct the court in a small way. So it's really been a lot of fun to practice in this forum over the last uh, seven, eight years. Sure. Now, and you've had 500 plus blog posts. I'm not going to ask you which was your favorite one, but looking back, as you think about the track record and the information you've put out there, are there any particular posts from the past four years that stand out in terms of reader reaction or for other reasons that when you look back at this, like, oh, yeah, that was a great one. Anything pop to mind? Yeah, I mean, naturally, I think it's going to be uh, April 2018 for us. And the SAS decision, which we've talked about sure. uh, we've yeah, talked yeah. about a, a number of times, it, it's a case that Jones Day represented the SAS Institute on a procedural argument that, that really became fundamental to how, how practice at the ETAB works. Dave was on the case and, and mm-hmm. there for the oral argument at the Supreme Court. And, you know, we were sitting there waiting in late April of 2018, and there were actually two cases that came out that day from the Supreme Court on the Patent Trial and Appeal Board. 
And we thought the other one was actually going to be the more noteworthy case, the oil states case, Mm -hmm. where the Supreme Court was dealing with the question of whether the PTAB was legal, whether it was constitutional or whether it was going to be struck down in its entirety. The oil states decision came out, came out first and said the PTAB is legal, is going to go forward. And I remember circulating a, an email to the practice noting that. Mm-hmm. And then just a few minutes later, the, the SAS decision came out and, and showed SAS had prevailed on their procedural point. And as mm-hmm. we read that decision, we saw how it was going to be transformative for, for mm-hmm. PTAB practice. And, and so getting to write about that case, that decision, and, and how we were involved in that case from the very beginning was really exciting and a lot of fun and by far the, the most fun case to cover at the blog. Big day. That's for sure. I wasn't involved at the level that you were, but hearing you guys talk about it since, and that we did a couple of podcasts and, and some of the publications, I know that was that was certainly monumental. Hey, speaking of monumental, uh, let's go back to Dave Cochran for a second. We're in the midst of something kind of different right now. 2020 will always be remembered as the year of COVID-19, and those effects are being felt everywhere. How will this virus situation impact PTAB activity? Example, are you anticipating a backlog of cases when things start to return to normal, assuming they do get back to normal? But if I'm a stakeholder in the whole PTAP process, what should I expect over the next couple, three months? It's full steam ahead at the Patent Trail and Appeal Board. The COVID lockdown, shutdown have not really impacted the timing of matters that are being handled at the Patent Trail and Appeal Board. And the reason for that, unlike patent litigation in the district courts, which has by and large slowed to a halt, because of this, litigation at the Patent Trail and Appeal Board is going forward unabated. Oh. And the reason is because the statute that created the Patent Trail and Appeal Board and created the inter partes review process requires that they complete their litigation matters within one year of the institution decision. So the statute requires them to go forward. They have no choice. Mm-hmm. They have a little bit of leeway. They can give themselves a six-month reprieve from that one-year date, but they typically don't do that. And so because of the one-year deadline, mostly, the, the Patent Trail Appeal Board is going forward full bore. They're giving people some relief from certain deadlines, but hearings are still occurring. I, you know, I mentioned last week we conducted our first remote video PTAP hearing, which I did here from my basement. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> It went, it went, a little um, inside baseball for you people out there. It went, re- it went really well. And it, it, the, the thing about the patent office is they have been moving to remote work for the last 10 years, really. They're really, of, of all the federal agencies, they are probably at the cutting edge of remote work. And so the patent examiners have been wor- working remotely for years. And it's, it's fairly typical when you show up in Virginia at the patent office for a, a PTAB oral argument. It's fairly typical that one or two or usually not all three judges, but at least one or two of the judges are remote. And they could be in Dallas or Silicon Valley or Detroit or in other places. Yeah. Uh, So the the patent office is, is, like I said, of all the federal agencies, probably the best equipped to move to the remote work environment. And so cases at the Patent Trail and Appeal Board are going forward full steam. And so I don't I don't expect that there's going to be any backlog going forward because the, the cases are not being slowed down at all. Well, you know, that is exactly the opposite of what I was expecting to hear based on everything else that's going on right now. But that's good news, I think. And and kudos to them, I guess. Yeah. Geez, they're doing things right. So, yes. well, then, then let's move aside from that. So for, let's forget COVID-19 for a second and go back to Matt. Talk, and you're on top of this stuff. You keep data, you, you watch this stuff, you edit this blog and everything. But talk about what PTAB activity was like earlier this year. And have you noticed any trends we might to watch for as we move forward through the rest of 2020? On the statistics front, new case filings, new petition filings are, are pretty on par with 2019 through the first five months of uh, fiscal year 2020 through the end of February. We're on pace for between 1,300 and 1,400 cases, new petitions for inter-parties review in 2020. So that's right on pace with 2019. Mm-hmm. And there's some interesting cases going on that folks definitely want to have an eye on. One is the Arthrex case that we talked about in our last podcast, where right. the Federal Circuit had said that the appointment of 
of PTAB judges was unconstitutional, mm-hmm. and they hacked at the, the statutes a bit to change the uh, status of those judges to make them what they felt was constitutional. That case has been continuing to uh, work through the federal circuit, who has now confirmed that they're not going to change that opinion from October of last year. And all three parties in that case, the appellant, the appellee, and the U.S. government, the patent office, uh, indicated that they may file petitions for further review at the Supreme Court. So that's going to continue to be, I I think, the the biggest hot button issue case to watch over the coming months. But as Dave said, the PTAB continues to roll forward. It'll be interesting to see what March statistics look like. But there's lots going on at the board and cases are still going to be filed there in large numbers. And and we don't see that slowing down. I think that's terrific news. Uh, Dave Cochran, let's go back to the blog for a second, which is kind of one of the reasons for this call today. You guys have hit on something. You found a formula here. There's a lot of interest in this information. As you pointed out, it was something brand new. The American Events Act creates PTAB, and here we are almost a decade later, and it's thriving. It's a great form and so forth. But, and I say this in all sincerity, uh, your team, you guys are thought leaders in this when it comes to PTAB issues. In terms of leveraging that position as thought leaders or kind of being on top of this, is there anything you're thinking about doing that might leverage Jones Day's reputation in this area? I mean, there are other, are there any other ways you might, I, I know you guys are, you look, <laughs> you're, you're, you're working with clients, you're, you're going to hearings, you're mentoring associates and so forth. You got a lot on your plate, but is there anything else, if you had a wish list in terms of what else can we do in this PTAB space, anything come to mind? There's a couple of things that Matt and I have been talking about that we're looking at kicking off this year. But the one thing that I think would be really interesting for us, and it, it goes back to the, the fact that we've published 500 plus articles now. By the time by the time the podcast is is broadcast, it'll be you know it'll be you know some number greater than that. And most of the articles are you know somewhere between two and three pages in, in length, single space typed. So if you make a compendium of all those articles, you're looking at a a book of PTAB knowledge and lore that's anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 pages in length. That's a lot of information that we've collected up. And so one of the things that we've been talking about doing since we're constantly creating new content is to form a a compendium, if you will, of PTAB Mm -hmm. knowledge where maybe quarterly or twice a year, in addition to our regular blog postings, we, we put out a Jones Day compendium of our PTAB articles by subject matter so that somebody who's really interested in learning about the PTAB, coming up to speed, law students that are interested in patent law and mm-hmm. PTAB procedure, that they can have a volume that they can go to to really get up to speed on the latest of what's happening at the Patent Trial and Appeal Board. And again, there are, there are some books that you can get that cost hundreds of dollars, and right. as soon as they're published, they're, they get relatively stale. So I think because our content is so fresh that we have an opportunity to create an updated compendium of PTAB knowledge that we can use going forward. And I'm hopeful that Matt and I, working together, we'll be able to pull that off this year because I think that would be a great addition and would really leverage all the hard work that the Jones Day IP attorneys have put into the blog uh, up until this point. There are two things going on. Number one, you've, you've demonstrated there is an appetite for this information out there. I mean, that's been proven by the, the blog traffic and, and the response you're getting from people who read. Second of all, certainly you've got a team together that's prolific in terms of getting content together and putting it out. So I, I think uh, you might have a winner there. That's, that's for certain. So good luck with that. I know I know a couple of good editors at Jones Day that might even want to help out. So we'll, we'll take you up on that. We'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Hey, Matt, let's wrap it up with this. You and Dave separately touched on this a little bit earlier, but let's just make it crystal clear. Any advice for others considering publishing a blog, whether legal or other professional services or just in general, what do they need to know or what do you wish you'd known when you were launching the blog? Yeah, def- definitely, Dave. And I admit it, it's a fair amount of work for, you know, or, you know. luckily we have a, a nice robust team to, to help us out here, but it, but it is a, a fair amount of effort that goes into this. It's pretty easy to see, but it, but it's also very, very enjoyable, I think, for a lot of us who are on the team. This is our world. This is, you know, our, our legal practice. So it's something that we're, we're interested in and excited about working on the blog you know, has a, has benefits for us. It's a, it's a great way for us to stay on top of all the details of the PT 
tab topic. It's a great way for us to let others in the world know that we know everything about this topic. But, you know, I think those benefits to us as the authors uh, of the blog really make it uh, worthwhile and, and save off that fatigue that I think hits a lot of blogs and, and, sure. and ultimately uh, leads to their demise a bit. But but here we have a topic that's going to provide us a continual source of content. And then we're backed up by this great team, 30, 30 Jones Day attorneys who are excited, passionate about this topic, you know, chipping in on a very frequent basis. It makes this a, really a, a pleasure to do, fun to do, and, and really is what keeps this ball rolling. Absolutely. Hey, we will leave it right there. Hey, and congratulations to you both. Great accomplishment. You know, you guys found a terrific area of the law to, to focus on and the response out there has been great. So uh, wonderful work and, and congrats. And we're, we're proud to be affiliated even with some small way with these quarterly podcasts with you guys. So nice job and congratulations. Thanks, Dave. Dave, yeah, Matt, really, thanks. Really appreciate all your support. We'll do this again soon. Take All care. Right. Thanks, Bye. Guys. Take care. You can find complete bios of Dave Cochran and Matt Johnson at jonesday.com. And be sure to check out Jones Day's PTAB litigation blog at PTAB litigation blog. That's again, one word, PTAB litigation blog.com. Subscribe to Jones Day Talks at Apple Podcasts and wherever else quality podcasts are found. As always, we thank you for listening to Jones Day Talks. I'm Dave Dalton. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you for listening to Jones Day Talks. Comments heard on Jones Day Talks should not be construed as legal advice regarding any specific facts or circumstances. The opinions expressed on Jones Day Talks are those of lawyers appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect those of the firm. For more information, please visit jonesday.com.